An investment advice provided on the following program is on an individual basis. Listeners should not consider today's discussion as a recommendation for any investment and should carefully evaluate before investing. This is your Real Estate Today on News Talk 1110. Hello, friends, and welcome to the show, Your Real Estate Today. We're glad you're with us. I'm your host, Paul Jamison, owner of the Jamison family of companies. That's Jamison Realty. Jamison Property Management, Jamison Property Investments. If you're a first time listener, you're now tuning into a show that is focused on things to do with your real estate. The show your real estate today, we've been around a long, long time. We've spent many Saturdays with a lot of people. So we're glad to be with you today, whether you're driving around, spending your hard earned money, or you're just hanging out looking for some good information. We're here for you today. And during this hour, my dear friend and mortgage lender extraordinaire, Sandy Dickinson with Summit Funding is here to share her knowledge with us throughout the show. Hey, Sandy. Hey, good to be here. Good, good to you have you. Glad, you. glad you're with us today. Today, you're going to tell people about the myths related to mortgage, the M-Y-T-H-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S
The oversized dining room will be perfect for hosting meals with our large family. Or, we look forward to living within walking distance of our church. Or, the single story layout will make it easy for me to navigate my wheelchair. Or, your house is the perfect place to start our family. Now, in a normal conversation, that's not a problem. That's actually kind of neat because we are emotionally attached to our houses, are we not? We've been there a long time. We have memories from there. And in some cases, we've raised our children there. I noticed, see, I had to say in some cases, mm -hmm. we have done that. So having someone that is emotionally attached to has value in the sales process to the seller a lot of times, because believe it or not, many people care who they're selling their house to. But there's this thing called fair housing. Fair housing has a set of rules and love letters in and of themselves, they're not illegal, but they can lead to housing discrimi discrimination which is against the law. In the U.S., the Federal Housing Act makes it illegal for home sellers, real estate agents, and other housing-related services to provide to discriminate based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, family status, or disability. So as we look at this, this is not a local thing. This is a national thing. And you've got to consider when you write these letters in a multiple offer situation, if someone who didn't win is going to raise the red flag and say, look, you know, you chose this person because they were a in a wheelchair or they had a family or and that in and of itself could be a problem. I don't like the love letters. And we certainly don't want to do the love letters with the pictures of your family in them, and the kids and so on and so forth. But I think if you're in a multiple situation and, and, and hopefully you're working with a veteran agent uh, like the folks on our team, and they're guiding you how to win that home without the love letter. Because the worst thing you could happen is end up tying this thing up in a lawsuit and having a problem. So you win by doing the right things, creating a strong, solid offer with good terms. And speaking of good terms, your lender is a part of that good term. So before we go into the next segment, Sandy, we've got about a minute and a half. How about a quick mortgage update? Okay, mortgage rate update. Um, so we look at inflation over the last week and it's up four tenths of a percent, um, but 60% of that is gas prices. So we're really not in a high inflation or worrisome inflation scenario at this point, which is good because that inflation would re cause rates to increase. Um, however, rates did increase this last week, but it looks like they're settling down a little bit. So if, I would just say if you're refinancing or purchasing, I would lock your rate in if you're happy with the rate. You don't know what's going to happen over the next several months or weeks. Uh, mortgage apps are up 8% on purchases, a 20% on refis week over week. And that's because the rates look like they were going up. So they Friday, I got information that they were going to go up. Um, they did go up. And then yesterday, um, which would be Monday or Tuesday, they started settling back down because we had a nice bond auction. So um, they're a little volatile now. They're still nice and low. You don't have to have the lowest. You just have to have one that makes sense that you're happy with. So I would say don't try to get the lowest rate. I've seen that before. And people have lost out altogether. So yeah, um, we're going to talk about that. There's... <laughs> In that That's right. So I would say if you're happy with your rate, lock it in and don't worry about it. Set it and forget it. 
If you're happy and you know it, lock it in, right? That's right. Uh, yeah, Jay's <laughs> clapping for me. Thank you, T. Give me a little added. He's got to help me out on this, some of this stuff. All right, so more, more to come. Stay with us to show your real estate today. When we come back, we're going to talk to Sandy Dickinson with Summit Funding about some of the myths that take place in the mortgage business. There's a great list here. We're excited to go through those. And then as we move forward, we're going to even talk about, if we have time, some cheap changes you can make in 2021 to get your house started off in the right foot. Cheap changes. Say that 10 times fast. That we'll be right change. back to show your real estate today on News Talk 1110 99.3 WBT. Welcome on this Saturday. I'm Paul Jamison, your host of the show, Your Real Estate Today. Thank you for spending your Saturday with us. We love it that you're with us. And if you're just now tuning in, the show, Your Real Estate Today is about real estate. As you all know, I'm the owner of Jamison Realty, Jamison Property Management, and Jamison Property Investments. If you're interested by in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, we have a great team. We are over 50 million in production and excited to help this market and very thankful for the years we've been here and excited to help you. And if you're interested in investing, don't forget to pick up a copy of my book, Opportunity is Knocking, which is available. Either you can reach out to pauljamison.com and get a signed copy sent to you, or you can get on Amazon, of course, and have it on Amazon. And make sure you select Prime. There are a lot of people selling my book for more than the $24.99. So um, pick up a copy and we'll talk more about investing if it is a part of building wealth that you are interested in looking at in 2021. I always say to people, it's interesting as they talk about all the political unrest and all the things that are going on. Listen, remember when we were in school, they had Maslow's hierarchy of need. Remember food, shelter, and safety. Shelter, people are always going to need it. They may not always need a place to work, but they're going to need a place to live. So, and right now they're working where they live on top of it. So, Make sure you think about real estate as a part of going forward. All right. Don't you agree, Sandy? I mean, is there any other I way? I do. To I do agree. <laughs> I know you do. You practice it too. All right. So the mortgage myths of your business. And what's so funny about this list, Sandy, because when I, I, uh, Sandy and I, whenever we're on the air together, we do a lot of back and forth emails and conversation about what we're going to talk about. And she said, you know what? I get asked these all the time. And I said, you know what, Sandy? So do I. And then I tell them to call you. <laughs> so let's talk about the first one, eh? Myth number one, everyone qualifies for low interest rates, right? That's not right. Why? <laughs> well, because the interest rate is not like, I get calls all the time, what's the rate? And I'm like, well, I can't just tell you what the rate is because there's so many factors that go into determining what the rate is. Um, and a lot of it's because of what we call LLP um, add-on. So loan level pricing, um, you know, perks. So for instance, if your credit score is low, you're gonna have a pricing hit. If you um, are buying a, ma a manufactured home, the rate's gonna be higher. If you're not putting very much down, then the rate may be higher. But then if you put between 20 and 25% down, the rate might be higher. So there's just, it's kind of like a science fair project. So every scenario is different. And I really have to know um, a lot of information to give you a good quote. So if you're looking online and you see a really nice rate, and then you call me and I give you a different rate, there it could, it, it could be for all those reasons. It could also be because are they charging points? Aren't they charging points? Um, you really have to delve in deep to know, um, if, to know the comparison and to know what your rate's going to be. Let me ask you this, Sandy, because I get asked this a lot. And this relates to this first myth. I don't know how many we're going to get through, but we're going to do the best we can because I have more questions inside of the questions. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm self-employed and mm -hmm. so are a lot of our clients. They're business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, does that mean I'm going to have to pay a higher rate? No. No, self-employment doesn't affect the rate. Okay. It Does it make it that I just have to provide more information? Absolutely. 
<laughs> or prove yes. that I have made what I'm making. Yes, we have to have a lot. And because of COVID, we have to make sure that your business hasn't declined. So we get, you know, business bank statements, P&Ls, all the way up to within 60 days of closing. Yes, I remember. P&Ls are profit and losses. It's in every business that you own. So um, the more businesses, the yeah. more work you're going to have to it, do. Yeah, I'm, but it's well I mean, worked. it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, and the fact that... Um, you know, I, I always, you know, right now for, for, for good and bad, you know, entrepreneurship has many benefits and it has many challenges. Some that come along with it, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? right. But, but when it came to, I, I just refied um, two properties uh, with Sandy. Uh, what was it, like four months ago? Something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's right. I mean, they required a lot of information. Uh, but what I found interesting, and I didn't really put two and two together, was the profit and loss statements that they wanted to make sure that we were still in business. And you explained that to me, but it was interesting. I'd never been asked for those before. So we have a lot of people that don't do them, and then I have to help them prepare them. And we also have um, a lot of a lot of loan officers, not necessarily the summit, that don't know how to look at them. And then they turn them into underwriting without looking at them. And right. then they run into problems. Right. And, and you know, as a as a entrepreneur, I, I know my numbers like the back of my hand. So, you know, it, it wasn't an easy or it was a very easy thing for us because we study our numbers. So it's like, OK, sure. No problem. Why first, and then okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Typical. So, so getting a mortgage myth number two: getting a mortgage today is easy, huh? It's um, it's not easy. It's not horrible, but it's not easy. We are going to ask for a lot of stuff. It's easy if you just give us what we ask for. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> if if you want to fight about it, it's not going to be easy. I had somebody today who did not want to give me their. Homeowners Association dues bills. They're like, they're nominal. Why am I wasting my time giving these to you? But guess what? The underwriter is going to want to see how much you're paying for the house to include it in the debt ratio. So we just have to have it or we're going to get buybacks from the investor and then it's going to cost us a lot of money. By us, I mean the company and then it's not going to even be worth us for, for us to do your loan. Yeah. Yeah, you want to um, have to have the yeah, documentation. Just, just knuckle down and give them what they want is basically what you're saying. Right. And if, you, if you're if you self-employed or if you have an accountant that doesn't mind, you know, sending over digital copies and stuff, it makes it easier if you, if you kind of ask them to help you out. Yeah. Gotcha. Or financial planners. Okay. All right. Next, myth number three, everyone should refinance their mortgage. Yes, that's a myth. Um, so what I do is I get, um, I find out a couple of things for every inquiry. I find out what your goal is. Is it a rate term refinance? Do you want to take cash out for some reason? And then I get your mortgage statement. And then I do an analysis to see if there's a tangible net benefit to refinancing. Mm -hmm. And all loan officers should do that. You shouldn't refinance unless it's a benefit. Um, how long are you going to be in the property? Right. Is it going to reduce your payment enough to make it, you know, so you break even on the cost pretty easily. Um, sometimes a rate sounds really good, but if it comes with three points and you're not going to recover your, your money through the lower payment in a decent amount of time, then it's not worth it for you. So um, you want to get that analysis on every file. Yeah, I think, I think that's really wise. We do in our business what's called a seller net sheet which helps people understand what the costs are of selling their home or what the, the net could be after they do sell. And that's kind of a, a, a cool way to analyze from our side. But I like the fact that you help people decide if they're only going to be there for another two years, why would they refi, right? Right. And, and make that analysis. That's good. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> this is one of my... Uh, uh, I don't know exactly how to put it. I think <laughs> folks will get it. You can apply for a mortgage after you found a home. That's very scary. Very scary. 
You want to start You're probably the not going to go under contract for a home if you haven't already applied for a mortgage is the truth, right? That is true because every time that um, someone writes an offer now, the sellers are going to want a pre-qualification or really a pre-approval letter. So it's, it's important to start early plus to find out it's not going to be good if you, if you go try to go under contract. Say you slip it through and you get it under contract and you've got a big due diligence and money and earnest money and then you find out you don't qualify for the house, you've lost that money. It's super important that you right. do that. When and we come back after purchase. the break, Sandy, remind me, I want you to explain the difference between a, a, a pre-qual letter and a pre-approval letter. Would you do that? All right. Coming back after the break, Sandy Dickinson with Summit Funding, myself, Paul Jamison. Okay. We'll We're do it. talking about the myths inside of a mortgage. We've got a lot of content for you. Sit back, enjoy. We're here for you, the show, Your Real Estate Today, here on News Talk 1110 and 99.3 WBT. Hello, and welcome back to the show, Your Real Estate Today. Paul Jamison, your host here with the Jamison Companies. That's Jamison Realty, Jamison Property Management, Jamison Property Investments. You are tuned into the show, Your Real Estate Today. Thank you for being with us and spending your Saturday with us. Here with my dear friend and mortgage lender extraordinaire, Sandy Dickinson with Summit Funding. You can always reach Sandy if you have a mortgage question or you're interested in a refi or you're getting ready to buy 704-577-0144 Summit Funding, Sandy Dickinson. All right. We have been talking about mortgage myths, falsehoods about mortgage that are true falsehoods that need an explanation. But at the break, we promised Sandy would explain the difference between a pre-qualification letter and a pre-approval letter. Sandy, if you would, please. Okay, so this is me. This is what I do. So if I'm, if somebody calls me and says, I gotta go make an offer on this house, I need a pre-approval letter, a pre-qualification letter. So all I do is I take their information. I do a, like a mini application um, and I find out where they work, how much they make, that where where their income is and where their assets are. And then I run a credit report. And if everything, if the credit report checks out, if they have good credit, and if I feel like I can really count on um, the income that they told me and the, and the information, and it seems easy, I can do a pre-qualification letter. So I might type one up that says that, that they are, basically they appear to qualify for the guidelines of the loan. Yes. Um, a pre-approval is different because uh, I get all that same information. I validate the income with, with documentation and I validate the assets and I make sure the ratios are good and I run it through an automated underwriting portal. And if I get an approval that way, then it's a super strong pre-approval letter and that's an approval. So it doesn't go to the underwriter. It can if we have enough time, but Typically, it, running it through the automated system is pretty good. Then all the underwriter does is validate the documentation, right. um, which means what I put in, as long as it matches, they're good with it. So um, that's basically the difference. Right. Okay. Now, again, I'm, I'm taking this one step farther, Sandy, because it's important. Let's say you're a seller and you uh -huh. have five offers in front of you. Uh -huh. And you have five letters in front of you from the lenders, five uh -huh. different lenders. And they all say pre-approval. Does that mean that they've gone to the same standard of approval that you just explained? No, it doesn't. So some of them write pre-approvals based on what I would do as a pre-qualification. So what I would say is I, I would look at who they come from. And I would also look at assets and the income yep. and pull the credit. See, you, you, you just fell right into my position because here's what we do at Jameson. When I'm in that situation, first of all, you've got to really read the letter. You got to look at the date on the letter. You've got to look at the amount that the letter is approved for. If there is an amount on it, you've got to look at, they put an address on it that they're referencing the piece of property. You got to look at the names on the letter. Yes, I've gotten letters with other people's names on it. <laughs> but in that situation, here's the extra step we take. You know what we do? We actually 
call the lender. Now, if Sandy is representing one of my buyers, what do you do, Sandy, that very few people do? I'll call the listing agent. Ah, now think about it. When you're in a situation where you've got five offers and they're all strong and you hear from the mortgage lender, what do you think that does in your position if you're a buyer? Yeah, it moves you up the ladder. You're darn right. That's one of the things I love that Sandy does is she will call that listing agent for me and go, you know what? John Smith, who has written the offer on this house, is strong. You're not going to have any problems that we can foresee from you. Yep. I'll That's tell a, him that we're going to close it on time. And then I ask him to pick us. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. choose us. <laughs> yeah. That's a wonderful thing. I absolutely love that. So think about the money it saves our buyers when they want a house to have something like that happen. You think that makes a difference? I think it makes a huge difference. She's done that call for me on a Sunday night before. So just saying, okay? All right, so I digressed as far enough. You ready to jump back in, Sandy? I'm ready. Okay, so <clears throat> next, myth number five, mortgage forbearance means you don't have to pay back your loan. That's a definite myth. The forbearance just kicks that can down the road. So I don't really understand why they did it. Uh, except some people, I guess, if they um, if they weren't getting paid and then they get paid, I don't know. It seems to me like it's, it's a precursor to a bigger problem. So don't ever file forbearance if, if you can make the payment. Um, and always prioritize your mortgage payment because the biggest payment's always the toughest to catch up. Um, it, I'm sure it's helpful to some people, but we had a lot of people do it and then they couldn't refinance and they couldn't purchase because they had filed forbearance. So you still have to pay back the money. It's just if you have to pay it back in three months in a lump sum, or if you can work something out with the lender, if you've truly had some hard times to where they either tack it to the end of the principal balance or whether they give you uh, some sort of payment plan. But, um, no, it doesn't mean you don't have to pay it back. You always have to pay it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, the same thing was happening in the investment market. We were very fortunate. We only had one or two people in our large portfolio that uh, did not pay their rent on time, which we we're very proud of and thankful for. But they thought that they could just not pay the rent for three months and just go on about the business, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not true at all. When that period is over, you own that lump sum for the months that you've um, not paid. And if you don't pay it, then the late fees kick back in. Right. So it's, um, it's a slippery slope to go down. You have to be very careful. And now you just can't claim, oh, I can't pay. You have to prove you can't pay. Uh, and you have to be willing to work out a payment plan. So there's a lot of slippery, slippery slopes in that. <laughs> See, I'm saying stuff that's hard for anybody to say. Um, all right, let's move on. Myth number six, you must put 20% down to get a mortgage. You kind of I still that. get this and um, that's absolutely not true. Um, we have as low as, well, depending on the type of loan, 0% down, 3% down, 5% down, 10, 15, um, depends on your scenario if you can get anything under five um, or three, but um, definitely you don't have to have the 20% down. And right now with rates so low, why would you want to put a ton down? Because you can make more, probably you can make more in the stock market or in some other investments um, than what you pay in yeah, a rate on the mortgage. Definitely, for sure. <laughs> All right. So number seven, renting is always cheaper than buying. No, we have a lot of um, people that rent and are buying houses and we're saving them money monthly and their owners and they're building equity. So I would say every scenario is different, um, but that is definitely not the case, especially with rents going up. Um, right. like they Rents have are been. going up exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So here's a very interesting thing I see <clears throat> maybe in the rental market 
15 to 20 percent of the time and, I, and it has some caveats to it okay uh -huh. is i see a lot of people renting homes that really like where they are and don't even think about calling you up sandy and going you know maybe the landlord will sell me this house and they can actually buy it and live in it cheaper than they're renting it for yeah that's great especially when with inventory so low that's a great way to find a good house mm -hmm. yeah i mean we're seeing that a lot where the renter is coming in and buying the house um, i'm not going to give you this next one because this one is a big big one but here's here it is, and then we'll let people ponder it over the break. So when we okay. come back to the break, it's the lowest interest rate is always the best option. Hmm. Ponder that one during the break. The show <laughs> your real estate today, Sandy Dickinson is with me with Summit Funding. I'm Paul Jamison. We're spending Saturday talking about real estate. We'll be right back on the show your real estate today here on News Talk 1110 99.3 WBT. Stay right with us. Welcome back to show your real estate today here on the islands. We're actually uh, broadcasting uh, remotely from what islands are in Charlotte? <laughs> Any from <laughs> Mountain Island. There we go. <laughs> thank you, TJ. <laughs> uh, my producer, he's working with us today. We're so thankful for him and having him back again in 2021. I'm here with Sandy Dickinson with Summit Funding. If you're interested in purchasing a home, uh, you need to get with Sandy early. Uh, and if you're interested in a refinance uh, or you'd like to see what your options are, uh, you need to get in touch with Sandy at Summit Funding. Sandy, what is the best way for them to reach you? Uh, my, my mobile, 704-577-0144. 577-0144, Sandy Dickinson. And we at Jameson work a lot with Sandy. She did the bulk of our loans for our buyers last year. And the only one she didn't get, the other loan officers were somehow related to the buyers that we had. So we didn't have a choice. <laughs> had to keep it in the family to keep everybody together. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sandy does so many loans for us. We're so thankful for her friendship, her partnership, and what she does for our clients. As a matter of fact, we have a dear friend and you know we, we all become friends in the process. There's one client you have, Sandy, right? That that um, decided that he enjoyed working with you so much, he called and said, you know, he's just trying to figure out if he can do another mortgage just because he had such a good time. That's right, because we make mortgages fun. That's it, <laughs> they are fun. That was, a, that, was, that was a lot of fun and a great impression and it certainly uh, helps our business and our clients. All right, so at the break, we left you with a ponder, did we not? We did. The ponder was the lowest interest rate is always the best option. And you can get online and see 2% for a 30 year mortgage. You can see all kinds of things. Can you not? You can. Well, why isn't the lowest rate that you see or even the lowest rate always the best option? Well, for one, one thing is that we basically all get our money from the same place. So you can shop and shop and shop, but the rates are the rates. We get them from Wall Street, basically. So if you see a really low rate, um, not gonna be, it's not going to be great to have a low rate if they can't close your loan. Yeah. So you, you have to look at the reputation of who's providing it. Also, there's a lot of teaser rates online and then you they suck you in and then it, you're not getting the rate you want or the rate you want comes with a lot of discount points, which makes it not worth it for you. I don't really recommend discount points because people either move or refinance or their situation changes about every five or seven years. Um, it takes about five years to recover one discount point through the lower payment. So that's not always the best, you know, I have people say, what's your lowest rate? Well, my lowest rate might be two, but you might be paying thousands of dollars to get that rate. Yeah. So it depends on your situation as to what rate and what points are best for you. 
it's best to be able to sit and talk with someone and have an analysis done to see, um, you know, how long you're going to be in the property, what's the rate versus the cost, um, and can they get the loan closed? Right. Okay. So let me back into my question with you with an example. Let's go back to, as we talked about earlier in the show, uh, I am sitting down, I'm representing the seller and I get five offers again, all with pre-approval letters. We now know what those are, but say for example, two of the pre-approval letters are from well-known online um, rocket propelled lenders um, that we know are very difficult to close or don't close on time the majority of the time we work with them. And that each time you call that lender, if you're the buyer, you never get the same person twice in your file. So does, does, does that low rate, like you talked about, even if you do get it, and it does depend on who the lender is, is my point, right? Yep, that's right. So a lot of companies have processing centers. So you might call a loan officer, you might get a call from a loan officer initially, and then it goes into this big pool of processors that are that are not local um, and not even local to the loan officer. And the loan officer is not aware of how the file is progressing because their job is only to Right. to take the order basically and then toss it into the processing center so unless you have a very diligent person working on your file which you don't know if you're going to get that or not it may or may not happen the way you want it to happen and do they are they locking your rate when they tell you is you know are they disclosing the information properly it's um it's a mixed bag of nuts basically so um if you super clean file it might just go fine but it's a risk um, if right. you don't Quicken know who you're dealing has with. ever called me and told me that the person that they are, uh, that is, uh, is wanting to purchase the house is a good qualified buyer. Never happened. I don't expect it to happen. Just saying. All right. Enough about that. We want to try to reach and get at least two more in. Are you ready? This isn't the lightning ready? round. We do have time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Myth number nine. You should never do an arm loan. No, I would say that you just have to look at what the margins are between the adjustable rate mortgages and Tell the somebody what an arm loan is, by the way. Um, how, right, yes. an adjustable Correct. rate mortgage. So um, if the if they're really low and you're and you're fairly, if you say you work for a company that relocates you every few years, then right. it might make sense to do an arm loan or you know you're not gonna right. keep that, that house that long. Um, and if you get a nice low rate. So I would say if it makes sense to do it, right now the arm rates are not really much different than the fixed rates. How could they yeah. be with rates so low? So probably a fixed yep. rate is a, a good um, a good investment now, but it changes, it always changes. So um, I would say, you know, explore it if, if yeah. you think right. it Number might be good. Yeah. And, and who knows, it might be good. We only got halfway through our list here. Investment property has to be rented before you can get a loan. It does not. So they've changed, they go back and forth on this, but at the moment we can use the typical rent for the area that we validate with the appraiser um, as the offset for the investment property payment. So we can count that as income knowing that your plan is to rent it, because obviously it's not difficult to rent a property right now. <laughs> All right, so very quickly, let me for 2021, Sandy, give some quick tips uh, okay. for folks, the things they can do to inexpensively to spruce up, whether they're getting ready to sell or they just want to do some sprucing. All right. And I'm going to go into the lightning round. So here they are. You can always paint. Number one, cheapest renovation thing you can do. Paint, paint, paint. Paint is cheap. You know, just be careful how you put it on. All right. All right. Next, you can switch out your faucet. 
switching out a faucet, especially the kitchen faucet, or even the master bathroom fixtures can provide a great new look. They got faucets now you don't even have to touch that, that Alexa can turn on and off. You know, faucets have become high tech, all right? Clean out your dryer ducts. Can't see the result of that, but sure is nice if your sucker's full, you don't want to get a fire going. Get your electrical inspected. Another great safety thing to do this time of year, build some raised flower beds, add some color. You can scrub or power wash your pathways. You can update the hardware in your kitchen. You can de-grime your house. I don't know how the grime got there in the first place, but if it did, de-grime it. Install weather stripping to save money. You can shampoo your carpets, always a good thing to do in the spring. Install lamp dimmers to be a true tree hugger. That's always a great thing. Dim the lamps and uh, you can do it from your Subaru. And also start a compost pile. Always a great thing if you're a composter and don't like to give the trash away. All right, Sandy, tell me how they can get you one more time. Call my mobile, 704-577-0144. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at 846-DUNN, 846-3663, or on the web at myjamisonhomes.com. We work buyers, sellers. We'd love your listings right now, but also investors. If you want to build wealth and you want to use real estate, we'd love to talk to you. Thank you for sharing your Saturday. Thank you, Sandy. And we'll talk to you next week to show your real estate you. here on News Talk 1110 99.3 WBT. God bless y'all.